Bard is a support class. Along with support video I've made in the past, this video is going to cover the Bard class in detail. Bard is one of the three supports in Lost Ark. She has great buffs and shield skills to save their allies. It is easy to tell a difference between a good Bard and a bad Bard. Not only they can increase the party's DPS and survivability, with good mechanical skills and strategic thoughts, they can adjust strategies and various raids to control the flow of the fight. I personally think this is the most important role in the Lost Ark party system. Let's talk about engravings by importance. First engraving. You should aim for your class engraving. It gives you additional heal for the party. It is very important. Second engraving. You need heavy armor 3. Because Bard has the lowest vitality point, Bards needs to be in closer combat if they plan to provide shields for the team. It is important for supports to survive. If you're having raid issues, it is mostly because of not having heavy armor engraving. Third engraving. If you have Awakening, Awakening is an important engraving for supports. It decreases cooldown and increases the number of times you can awaken. Fourth engraving and beyond. They're selected in preference out of these engravings. You can choose two. Expert provides even more shield and healing. It's very efficient. Max MP increase. If you do not manage your mana and spam skills too much, you tend to run out of mana, so some people use this to cover it up. Vital point. Increases stagger. This is actually really good on later rates where you require quick stagger mechanics, so I personally recommend this as well. Additional engravings. I don't personally recommend, but people do use them. Drops of Ether. It's a decent buff engraving to your party, but people do not really walk over and grab them, so I don't really recommend it. Spirit Absorption. Spec Combat Stat Bard uses this engraving, but I do not recommend Spec Bard at all, which I'll talk about during the Combat Stat section. Magic Stream. Bard needs to take hits for other players due to your shield mechanic, so an engraving requires you to not get hit doesn't really work. MP Efficiency Increase Recover tends to be less efficient than having a bigger mana pool, but if you cannot get max MP increase engraving, this is an alternative choice. As for combat stats, there are two builds, full swiftness and full spec. Regardless of what it is, you need a good quality swiftness and spec necklace. Swiftness tends to be a better combat stat for Bard because it decreases your cooldown of your skills and increases movement speed. Supports need to be the most versatile member in the team, therefore she needs to be fast, utilizing skills more tends to be much better to keep your buffs on. If you wish to have a high spec Bard though, going Spirit of Shortsman is a must for covering the movement speed. However, trying out both builds myself, Swiftness is definitely more efficient in overall performance due to faster cooldown and for more forgiving skill management. As for how much Swiftness, I recommend at least 1281. Why 1281? Reason being is in the future, all supports will be having a Yearning Relic set. And what the set does is it gives 18% movement speed and identity gauge gain, 10% attack movement speed, and 10% damage increase. Basically, they will be in Aura. If party members inside the Aura, they will get the 10% damage and 10% attack speed and movement speed buff, which is very, very good. Now, the question is, in order to reach maximum movement speed of 140%, you need at least 122% movement speed because you get 18% from the Yearning set, which is 1281 Swiftness. So if you look at here, I have movement speed of 122%. If I activate my yearning set, it goes to 140%. So more swiftness is better, but even more kind of tends to get inefficient. So what I've done is I put a little bit on spec. So I have 713 spec and 1497 on swiftness, which is 32% cooldown compared to about 1800, which is 38% cooldown. In comparison, 1281 is 27% cooldown. I suggest you guys to theory craft your own ratio as well based on your playstyle. Let's go over skills and tripods. First, you have an identity where you have a choice to give damage buff or heal. More bubble it has, the stronger the effect. For example, 3 bubble attack buff is 15% increase in damage, while 1 is 5. Sound shock. Your marking skill. What mark does is it debuffs your foe to take 10% additional damage. If you have it properly set up, you should be able to do this debuff consistently. A good bard almost never drops his synergy. Your party is losing 10% DPS if you do not focus and land all of your sound shocks. Tripods are maintain explosion for longer lasting energy, sacred shock for the marking, and rapid fire. Overwhelm or conviction judgment rune is equipped. Harp of Rhythm. Another marking skill, the harp will attack like a turret, giving mark as well. If landing your sound shock is troublesome, you can actually use the skill as well. Tripods are preference at the top, you have melody increase, and a note brand is a must for the marking. Conviction and judgment skill or wealth runes are equipped. Wind of Music, important shield mechanic skill, provides shields to allies while damages foes. Try to land them both for more bubble game. So you have cooldown tripod, melody increase, and protection tripod is good. As for runes, wealth runes are recommended. Prelude of Storm. Most bubble gaining skill. Cooldown tripod, bubble gain increase, and a tripod that increases the amount of hits. Legendary wealth rune is usually equipped here. 
Silent Holic, your main stagger skill, also gains a lot of bubbles even without the gaining tripod. So you usually have a damage in tripod, longer sustain for more ticks, and focus fire. Overwhelm runes are usually equipped here. <laughs> Heavenly Tune, main buff skill. Make sure this is turned on every cooldown. It is very important. Tripods are cooldown related, tough tune, and intense tune. Gale wind runes are usually often used. Guardian Tune, main defensive buff skill. You have the stagger armor here, and you have a tripod that gives additional shield, and a buff where you can block one CC. But great bards of high experience in raids tend to know when enemy CC is coming, so they match those timings to provide buffs. This takes extreme skill, but keep in mind it is used that way. Gilwin runes are often used. Sonic Vibration. This is your secondary buff skill. If your heavenly tune is on cooldown and buffs have ran out, you place this on top of your allies to give additional buff before your heavenly tune runs out. You have Stagger Shield, the buff, and then large AoE. Often it is good to place behind the boss because people tend to back attack a lot more than front attacks. Gale Wind or Conviction Judgment Rune is equipped. Rhythm Buckshot, your main counter skill. Counter should be equipped with Tenacity Tripod, your Stagger Shield, and Third Tripod increases cast speed. With Gale Wind equipped, it's a really good counter to have. Rhapsody of Light. You take this replacing either Sound Holic or Rhythm Buckshot. You're in super armor state due to the second tripod. Shining Protection gives huge defense to your party mate. If your party mate tends to fall down or about to take big hits, if you place Rhapsody of Light on top of them, they will take less damage, resulting in avoiding sudden deaths. Great Bards use this in higher tier raids to save in grave situations. Runes are personal preference. Let's quickly talk about cards. You do not need to worry about cards for support. Just equip Field Boss 2 or Farewell Weapon. More HP you have, more effective your shield and heals become. For a very long term BIS, it's Lost Wind Cliff 30 Awakening set. But this requires your DPS parties to have Light of Salvation, which is highly unlikely for a long time. The Wheel Meet Again and Force of Giants is also a good choice if you do not have heavy armor engraving. Now let's talk about gameplay a little bit. Gameplay is very simple. You make sure your heavenly tune is used on every cooldown. At the same time, you need to hit your sound shock every time. If you notice here, the timing is very tight, but more swiftness you have, the easier the process. Like I've mentioned in the skill section, great bards do not miss their sound shock. If you're having problems landing your sound shock, Harpo Vidin can be replaced with a buckshot or sound holic for a little help in marking. When your heavenly tune is on cooldown and buffs run out after 8 seconds, you need to use your sound vibration to try to keep up the good buff to your party mates. It takes time and experience to know where to place the skill. Your Guardian Tune should be used on every cooldown as well. But if you happen to know when raids have dangerous moments, match those timings and provide them the buff. You'll be surprised how many people will survive a death. Same mechanism can be used in Rhapsody of Light as well. There are specific situations where your party mates could die. Try using the Rhapsody of Light on top of them. They will not know now, but as people get more experience in the game, they will thank you and appreciate your supporting skills. As for Wind of Music, don't try to chase your teammates to provide them shield. If you land your Wind of Music to the boss, DPS players tend to be around the area, so make sure you find a good spot to land both allies and enemies. Often DPS classes attack in the back, so you can be there to provide shield and damage to the boss for huge bubble games. Also for ranged DPS, sometimes they will walk past you. You can use those timings to provide shields to them. At empty times, make sure to use Prelude of Storm or Sound Holics to fill up your bubble as well. As for bubble usage, there are a few tricks. Bards can now save leftover bubbles, meaning when your bubble is at 1.9, heal or attack buff will be one bubble worth of cost. Therefore, you have 0.9 bubbles left over. It used to be use all bubbles or nothing. Heals are not that efficient at 2 or 3 bubbles, but attack damage is really efficient at the third bubble. Managing your bubbles efficiently is very important. For example, if you're around 1.8 bubble, you need to determine if your party needs a heal or not for a long time. If you think the party is stable, you should try to go for the 3 bubble attack buff. If not, don't hesitate to use the 1 bubble heal. Make sure your awakening usage is deficient as well. When you're at 2 bubbles, you have a choice. You can use awakening skill to receive a free bubble for 3 bubble attack buff, or build it up to 3, use the 3 bubble attack buff, then proceed to use your awakening with a follow up 1 bubble heal. Make sure your awakening is used at situations if you think the party mates require big support. Like when often when raid bosses do tedious or hard to dodge AoE patterns. So I guess this wraps up the video. Hope this helps. Thanks. Bye.